here to the Valley of Kings deep inside Egypt. It's a blessing to be here in this wadi, which became the burial place for, 20, for 62 different kings, at least so far. They're continuing to search in this valley that's shaped, well, the mountains are shaped like pyramids. They came out here because instead of building their tombs inside the pyramids like at Giza, these were places which were much more hidden, making sure that everything that was buried with them would be safe when they went into the afterlife. And this is desert, this is truly Egypt. And I wanted to speak on this first episode of our Desert Fathers about one of the Desert Fathers named Abba. Well, actually, he has a very long name in Greek, but I'm gonna call him Abba Pomen. Abba Pomen was from Egypt. He was a little bit north from here, but he did live as a hermit. In fact, he's one of the most cited spiritual desert fathers, and his name, or his nickname, is Shepherd. He was known as a shepherd because of the way he treated his monks, because of the way that he really guided people because he was a well-known spiritual guide. So when did he live? He's one of the earliest fathers from the 4th century, early 4th century, about 340 or so until the early 5th century, about 400. And he came to the desert seeking the Lord. So he came to the desert and was not known for his asceticism, but more so because he was the shepherd working on his heart. And during this first few days of our exodus, our pilgrimage of freedom, we've been speaking about the heart of Pharaoh. We've been speaking about the heart of the people who've been enslaved here in Egypt and God working on them and the time it takes to work on them, the time it takes to work on Moses' heart. So let's talk a little bit about him and what he said about the heart. First of all, he lived in a monastery in Setis, one of the first centers of earthly early Christian monasticism here in Egypt. And a lot of the monks around him recorded his writings because they were so, actually, they were so helpful. And I want to read a story about him and what one of the friends of his speaks about. This is wonderful. It says, one of the monks recounts that some of the older monks approached Abba Pomen for his advice on how to treat monks who fell asleep during their prayers. And they told him that they were inclined to wake the sleeping monk while Abba Pomen took a more compassionate approach as that shepherd. And he says, for my part, when I have seen a brother who is dozing, I put his head on my knees and let him rest. And so he was really opposed to giving harsh penances. In fact, many of the other desert fathers would say if someone would do something wrong and they'd get a penance for, say, three months, he would say, no, no, no. For their heart, we'll change it to three days. So it's just a beautiful uh, example of him. And I wanted to read specifically about the heart from Abu Pomen. So this is his heart-centered spirituality. He said, if you have a heart, you can be saved. Let's go back to what happened with Pharaoh. His heart was hardened. If you have a heart, says Abba Pomen, you can be saved. And then he goes on. The nature, and this is one of my favorite images because we're surrounded by these, these rocks. Just think of a very, very hard rock, like granite. The nature of water is soft. That of stone is hard. But if a bottle is hung above a stone, allowing the water to fall drop by drop, it wears away the stone. So it is with the word of God. It is soft, and our heart is hard. But the man who hears the word of God often opens his heart to God. That is specifically what the desert fathers, the desert mothers came out here to do, to let this water drop onto their hard hearts. And he says, teach your mouth to say what is in your heart. So if you think about this, just as a reflection, as we look at this desert scene and really ask the Lord on this Saturday, Lord, soften my heart, soften my heart. I do not want a hard heart like Pharaoh. Take me out, set me free. The word in Greek for heart is actually cardia, and it is the place where we enter prayer. It's very likely, since Abu Pomen lived in this area, that he spoke Greek. It was the Greek uh, time, well, Roman time, Greek and Roman time. They spoke Greek still in the 4th century. 
And so he probably wanted to use that meaning very specifically. And then the Greek word for salvation is actually soteria, which indicates a sense of wholeness and integrity. So to be saved means to find a congruence between your inner life and how you are in the world. Just like we've seen in these different temples of the pharaohs, you have the sign for life, and then you have a sign for a suitable life. So your inner life and how you are in the world is how you bring congruence in your heart. To return your heart, return to your heart as a source of awareness and attention when those two things come together. You know, another important thing to think about is how our hearts can harden over time, which is exactly what happened in this Exodus story. Our hearts harden over time as we grow more and more distant from ourselves, more and more distant from ourselves and allow busyness, the busyness of the world to consume our attention. If you come to the desert, your attention is not on the busyness of the world. So the invitation again and again is to return to the heart and to recognize the slow work of spiritual practice, softening us and making us more receptive to God's movements. We may not feel it each day, but the image of the stone, in fact, you can have a stone with you during Lent. It's a very common image uh, or sign or symbol that people have. The stone serves as a reminder of this truth. We need to be softened. The desert fathers and mothers knew about stones and hard places in the heart. And they also were witnesses of the long journey the heart must take through this type of barren landscape to connect once again to that still voice within. So the desert fathers and mothers drew on the biblical image of hardness of heart. And I'm sure we've heard it a million times, but let's just listen to Ezekiel 36, 26. And this can actually be our prayer on our Exodus journey. The Lord promises us, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Interesting to note, since we're here in Egypt, when you go into tombs and they see mummified uh, bodies, one of the things that they have inside the body is the heart. All of the organs, as you've probably heard, are taken out of the body, they're put into jars, and they're buried with the corpse. And the reason is not because eventually when they rise from the dead, these mummified um, organs will go back into their body, not at all. In fact, they're not mummified. They're just kind of left to, to dry out but they keep the heart inside the mummy's body. Why is that? Well, if you ask Egyptians, many of the scholars say, because they think uh, that the beliefs were this is where life comes from. And so if this mummified body is going to return to life, it needs to have the heart inside of it. Now let's talk about what happens at judgment though. Because here in the Valley of the Kings, all of these people were just waiting to be judged and to be brought into the afterlife and God willing be able to use all of the things that were buried with them. In fact, just down the road here is the tomb of Tutankhamun. King Tut was found only a hundred years ago. It's just incredible. So what is it that happens when they're judged? Well, apparently there's a scale. And on the scale you have a heart and on the other side you have a feather. And if your heart is on this side and it weighs as light as a feather or less, you go to the afterlife. If it weighs more, then of course you don't. So what makes your heart weigh less? Well, even according to the Egyptian beliefs, when you do good to others, your heart becomes much lighter when you live that suitable life. So every Sunday where we are, we'll have the chance just to look out over the desert and ponder the words of the desert fathers or mothers in our hearts. Abba Poman said, Do not give your heart to that which does not satisfy your heart. 
and teach your mouth to say what is in your heart. So as we look out over this desert area, let's pray for one another to fill our hearts with that which satisfies our hearts and brings us to eternity so that everything we say, everything that we do, will reflect what is in our hearts. Abe Pomen, pray for us.